What's up everyone, Phil here and welcome to KO Gaming. Last week I did my very first playthrough of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard on the PlayStation 4 and people seemed to love it. However, I was torn at the beginning of this playthrough as to whether or not I should do it as a standard one on my normal television or if I should use the PlayStation VR, which I do own and which the game is fully compatible with. Now the thing is, I had used the PlayStation VR to play the final version of the Resident Evil 7 beginning hour demo at the end of last year and I really wasn't too impressed. The graphics really seemed significantly downscaled to me, and it really didn't seem to add much of anything to this demo. It wasn't like, wow, it felt like a totally different experience, so I was on the fence. Now, a lot of my viewers said, man, if you do it in VR fully that first run, it's going to be so different from other YouTubers who are going to be playing this game, but ultimately, I made the executive decision to just do it as a normal playthrough because I really wanted this first run through the game to look as good as possible for my viewing audience and to not have people get turned off because because of the judderiness of the camera in virtual reality and the downgraded graphics. I think ultimately I made the right decision, but after I played the game through once, I wanted to see if I actually did do this game in virtual reality, would it add anything significant that maybe I missed out on during my first run? And so for the past couple of nights, I ran through for a couple hours each night playing through Resident Evil 7 a second time in VR, and I noticed some big glaring positives as well as some pretty big negatives to using the peripheral to play this game. What I want to do in this video is kind of run through the comparison of playing this game normally on a television versus the PSVR to give you a definitive reasoning as to what is the best way to experience this game. Now, a few things up front. I played this sitting down on my couch in a normal space where I did all of my other PlayStation VR footage in late 2016. I know there's some people that probably have more space than me and some people that don't have as much space. Some people maybe wanted to do this standing up, but I opted for the most casual kind of normal state that you're in when you're gaming, relaxed on a couch, playing it with a controller in front of you, and that's what I did. So, you know, my experience may not be exactly the same as what yours was if you tried to play this game in PSVR. However, I do want to share my experience is with everyone, so here we go. So the first major difference I noticed from VR and non-VR is that the pre-rendered cutscenes are played on what looks like a virtual movie screen. Instead of being, you know, 3D, you just see this kind of static 2D screen in front of you. I wish I could represent this in the video feed here, but I can't because when you're capturing the PSVR, it all looks 2D, so I can't really show you what it looks like, but just imagine that you're sitting in front of a movie theater pretty close up to a movie screen, that's kind of what it is. Now this is all well and fine, however, there are some moments during gameplay when you're in the middle of a VR scene and then all of a sudden it goes to a pre-rendered cutscene, and it's pretty jarring. For example, at the very end of the introductory sequence in the guest house, when Jack knocks you out and starts dragging you over to the main mansion, the game changes from VR to the 2D and it really just doesn't look good at all. That's one little minor nitpick, but it definitely is a difference from the standard gameplay. One thing I noticed about it is that the default settings for Resident Evil 7 in PSVR just don't seem very good, almost like they were overcompensating or trying to give you a setup that un unfortunately kind of nerfs your experience. For example, the field of view is set to this setting called Auto. Now what this does is that during certain scenes and areas, you have a wider field of view and it almost looks like you're watching a television and playing the game. At other times, it automatically narrows your field of view, making everything around you super dark, and it makes it incredibly hard to see anything. I mean, I'll be honest here, if I hadn't played Resident Evil 7 one time through before I tried it with the PSVR, I guarantee you I would have missed out on the vast majority of items and things around me. I have no idea why the default setting for field of view ends up being so narrow in some circumstances. So if you are actually going to try this on PSVR, I strongly recommend you take it from auto to off in the settings menu. In addition, there just doesn't seem to be a way to either crouch or turn well in this game in VR. And what I mean by that is by default, these settings make you just kind of judder around. You're standing, then you're crouching. There's no motion in between. Same thing for turning. It does kind of an automatic 30 degree turn every time that you tap the right thumbstick left or right. And that's fine, but it doesn't look natural. It looks like you're kind of juddering around. And I was wondering why that was. So I actually went into the settings and found that there's actually a turning smoothing option 
option, which allows you to turn more naturally and actually makes things look smooth as you move through the game. Problem being, when I enabled this setting, it actually made me feel sick to my stomach. I wasn't necessarily motion sickness, and indeed, I actually don't get motion sick in real life, but after playing it for about 20 to 30 minutes with this on, I had to turn it off. I just started feeling queasy. And I don't know if that's just a symptom of VR or what, but it ends up that it looks like the best way to experience the game, at least movement-wise, is to leave it juddery and having it move at a certain predetermined angles of movement, or else you're going to end up feeling sick. Another really weird omission with this game in virtual reality is that there's actually no option to change the gamma or brightness in the menu. I mean, it's a survival horror game and a lot of people enjoy putting up the brightness in games like this so that they can actually see what they're doing. It's just not there. It's just a glaring omission. Now, there are ways around this. You can either in the PSVR settings themselves manually up the brightness of the visor on your head or, if you're trying to capture video for, say, a game playthrough on YouTube, you could obviously use whatever your capture software does to artificially up the brightness. But the fact still remains that for every game I've played ever had a brightness adjustment in a menu, and for some reason when you're using the PSVR, it doesn't exist with Resident Evil 7, that doesn't make sense to me. So let's talk about the two main things that everyone probably wants to know about, the actual first-person virtual reality experience, as well as the 3D audio that the PlayStation VR is supposed to create, with its little unique sound card that's built into the unit. First, the visual experience. I'm gonna be honest here, it's pretty cool to be able to walk through virtual horror houses and have these mutated freaks coming after you. I mean, it really did feel a lot more realistic when I could see Marguerite lurking in the room right next to me or Jack right around that virtual corner and I had to kind of sneak around in order to avoid for them to see me and I'm trying to stay actively out of their line of sight. While playing it on a TV, it just doesn't seem to replicate the same kind of feeling. It really does feel like you're actually there when you're using the PSVR and that's a good thing. There's also certain scenes in the game that really lend themselves to the 3D kind of uh, effect of the PSVR. For example, just in the introductory segment when Mia is attacking you, it's pretty crazy to make it feel like there's someone right in front of you trying to stab you with a virtual knife. It's a lot different than kind of seeing it go down on a television screen. So in that regard, putting yourself in the perspective of the person being attacked and having it feel like that person who is attacking you is right in front of you is a unique and spine chilling experience that actually is greatly accentuates what I would say would otherwise be a pretty standard survival horror deal and that's a cool thing. But there were also some negatives to the visual experience using the PSVR, so let's talk about them. First off, the detail of the graphics. Yeah, it's massively downscaled from the full 1080p that you'll see using a normal television. And I don't know how they could have done any better, being that you need such a high frame rate in order to do things on the PSVR. It makes sense that they had to downscale the graphics a lot. But yeah, it definitely does take away from the game when a lot of textures and things are pixelated. A lot of the plant life just looks terrible. I mean, some things look great and others don't look great at all. Almost looking like you're playing on the Nintendo 3DS in some places. And it is kind of a jarring thing to take you out of the, the first person realism of being in virtual reality. I think that's just going to be a necessary evil. I mean, in order to get a affordable VR headset to be sold on the PlayStation 4, they needed to have these shortcomings or else they weren't going to be able to sell it for the low price tag that they did. So it is what it is. It doesn't necessarily ruin the game, but it definitely is noticeable as you're playing it. Now, in addition, I've already mentioned there's no really easy way to on-the-fly adjust the brightness, and also there's little issues with turning and crouching that make it a little bit more unrealistic. Obviously, your mileage may vary there because some people may be able to use tweaks and adjustments for the motion. It doesn't make the motion sick, but it did make me motion sick. So again, whenever I wanted to turn and all of a sudden I I teleported 30 degrees to the left or teleported down to the ground for a crouch, it definitely made it feel a lot less realistic than I would have liked it to be. Now, the other major thing is the shooting. How easy is it in VR? Well, let me tell you something. When I started playing the game, I actually thought the aiming and shooting was far more difficult because you don't use the controller's thumbsticks to aim. Instead, you actually use your head. That's right. You will turn your head left and right to move the little targeting icon, hopefully onto the head of your enemy to get a nice headshot, and then you use the triggers to fire. It's a little bit wonky, and it does take some getting used to, but after about an hour to two hours of playing the game, when the enemy started to ramp up a little bit, 
it ended up getting a little bit easier for me. The only time I would say it's really difficult is when you get in close quarters and enemies right up in your face, because now it gets really hard for you to see where you're actually aiming, and you end up kind of firing wildly, hoping you're just going to kill the thing before it ends up hitting you, and that could be a little bit frustrating. But... As I played more and more, I started getting more accurate with my headshots, more accurate with where I wanted to shoot enemies. So ultimately, I would think that if you play the game enough, you're going to get used to it. But it should be said that obviously, if you're a person used to playing with a controller, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to play through this game just using the controller because there's not really a learning curve versus trying to actually aim with the PSVR headset could be a big learning curve. And then the last negative that I really have to say about the VR experience is that sometimes it just doesn't seem to work. Work. For example, it's really cool when an enemy will jump out at you and try to attack you and you know it's coming straight at you so it has that 3D effect, but sometimes I notice the enemies would almost go too far, meaning they would almost phase into your body, and so now you're struggling to move your head around to try to see where they are, because remember you're aiming with this head unit, not with the controller, and you can't even really get a good shot at them because they're kind of at your feet rather than right in front of you where they would have been obviously if you were playing this on a normal television, and it actually leads to a little bit more frustration than any anything else. In addition, during some of the boss fights, I found the PSVR just started losing calibration. Now, I don't know what that was about. Maybe it was because there was more frequent motion or anything during the boss fights than during the slow and exploration and killing normal enemies. But in particular, during the chainsaw fight with Jack, the camera would all of a sudden automatically go behind me and Jack would be behind me dueling chainsaws with me in like that little cutscene that happens when the chainsaws clash, leading me to have to bend my entire body backwards to see what the hell was going on and then as soon as that little cutscene ended I would have to rapidly tap the right thumbstick multiple times in a direction to spin around and confront him. It did this a ton of times during the boss fight making it an incredible chore even though I knew exactly what I needed to do to win. I don't know what happened there but that was a 100% perfect example of the PSVR not working at one critical moment when it absolutely should have. Now let's talk about the 3D audio which is built into the PSVR hardware and how it actually works with Resident Evil 7 as a gameplay experience. I used my standard Astro A40 headphones, which I've used with many different things before, and plugged them directly into my PSVR as I played Resident Evil 7, and the experience I had was very hit or miss. In some cases, the surround sound sounded really good. If I'm wandering around a certain floor of the house, and Jack or another enemy was there, I could actually kind of tell exactly where they were in a hallway, and I could tell if they were getting closer or more far away, and that was a good thing, because I was able to judge, gee, should I go in this door? Should I go around this hallway? Because I think that Jack is here or there. In particular, one time that I think the 3D audio worked really well was during the Marguerite boss fight, where she's crawling through the ceiling and looking to stalk down and jump on you and get a cheap hit. I was actually able to hear her walking above me, and she never really was able to get that surprise attack because I could hear when she was near me, leading me to kind of move to a different area, so that was a good thing. But ultimately, I really didn't get much surround sound at all except for maybe those two moments of the entire playthrough. And I don't know if it's just because the surround sound built into the PSVR <clears throat> wasn't utilized properly for this game or not, but I can tell you this, I actually using my Triton headset, my Triton Pros, ended up sounding much better surround sound wise with this game when I did my standard playthrough on my regular television. Again, it could be that maybe the hardware of the Triton Pros is better than the hardware built into the PSVR, but it just sounded better. I really didn't get a, a sense of surround sound in a lot of cases when playing Resident Evil 7 on the PSVR. So I think that's a shortcoming, and in particular, I actually have a blind viewer who asked me if I could please really be paying attention to the 3D audio as as I played through this because he wanted to know, geez, is this something if I got PSVR with Resident Evil 7, could I play the game? Could I hear the enemies if they're higher or lower or wherever? Could I aim and actually kill the enemies based on hearing? And sadly, based off of my experience, I'd have to say probably no. It just didn't seem accurate enough where, oh, it sounds like it's directly right there and you would look and the enemy would be there. It would maybe kind of be generally in that area, but it never was like so accurate that it felt like you were really there. It seemed more like kind of a virtual surround sound dolby experience rather than anything else so the 3d audio i think it's a great idea and i think other games will implement it better in the future being that this is the first full retail game really that's a triple a release to utilize it maybe they were able to do as much as they wanted with it but for me it really didn't add that much to the experience at all 
So I just listed a bunch of positives and negatives about using virtual reality with Resident Evil 7, but I really never got to the biggest and most glaring negative about it, the actual elonged and prolongated use of the PSVR headset. Up to now, most of the games that I played in virtual reality were little demo experiences or mini games that ended within, say, 10 to 20 minutes. Never really an extended kind of an experience like Resident Evil 7, which at its core is around a nine and a half hour long game. So how did the PSVR hold up in this more lengthy gameplay experience? Well, I found that honestly it was pretty comfortable and it really didn't get to me once I found my little adjustments that made the field of view wider and all of that. It wasn't too big of a deal, however, it does need to be said that the longest that I can really go using the PSVR without taking a break is around 40 to 45 minutes long. After that, my face starts to sweat up because it's a bunch of condensed air around my eyes and my neck starts to feel a little bit of fatigue and I have to take the time to take the unit completely off my head and relax for about 5 to 10 minutes before I can put the whole contraption back on, including the headphones and everything, get ready to record, and then go ahead and play for another 30 to 40 minutes. It's very annoying. Annoying. And it gets to the point where if you're trying to do a prolonged session, for example, I was trying to play in two hour long sessions, I was only able to record for about 90 minutes each because I took so much time to put the thing on and then have to take it off to take a break and put it back on and wipe the lenses, which then had condensation on them, and then take them back off. Now, I know that that's not the universal experience that people have with PSVR. Some people, I guess, are lucky and have the ideally shaped heads for this unit so that they don't get condensation and their necks don't hurt. Unfortunately, I'm not that lucky and so I kind of have to do this adjustment every few you know half hour or so that kind of pulls me out of that experience of virtual reality and honestly it is a little bit disappointing because if you're there and you're immersed in the universe and you're immersed in the game and you want to keep going and all of a sudden man oh my face is so sweaty and my neck hurts I gotta take a break it really could be jarring to pull you out of that experience that immersion you know when I was playing Resident Evil 7 I barely took any breaks because I was loving the game so much I just wanted to keep going and I could couldn't do that while playing Resident Evil 7 on the PSVR. This is a major issue that I fully expected to happen way back when the PSVR first launched and I said man I can't ex I can't really see myself playing a full length retail game on here because I'm gonna have to take so many frequent breaks and that 100% held true when I was trying to play Resident Evil 7 so if you are planning on doing a playthrough of a game like this in the PSVR you have to re pre prepare yourself you're gonna have to take frequent breaks unless you have the perfect head for the unit and that could be pretty annoying. So ultimately, in conclusion, is playing Resident Evil 7 Biohazard on a standard TV or the PSVR the definitive experience? Well, I think that playing the game on either is great, but ultimately, I don't think that just because you play it on a TV that you're missing out on anything that makes this an amazing game. In fact, I'll be honest here, after playing Resident Evil 7 Biohazard on my television, I gave it a 9 out of 10 in the game review last week, and I said I think it's one of my favorite survival horror games of the past several years. Obviously, if this was a game that died for VR, I wouldn't have said that. And in fact, I'll be honest, yeah, there's some moments playing it with the PSVR that are amazing, you're seeing these enemies come right at you and being in your face, but that's all also paired off with all the negatives, like the fact that the camera malfunctions, the fact that the turning is jittery, the fact that there's a narrow field of view and you can't find the items as easily, the fact that certain enemies get too close to you and then you can't really aim for them, and then the fact that you can't even really wear the PSVR for more than 30 to 40 minutes without having to take breaks, making it take longer for you to actually play the game and breaking the immersion. It's funny because I've heard a few other YouTubers out there, I'm not going to call out any particular names, but they're swearing that the PSVR is the only way, the definitive way to experience Resident Evil 7, but when they say that, I hear them mention none of the negatives that I just called out in this video, to which I have to say, I think I smell a little bit of bullshit, and I hate to say it, but a lot of these YouTubers today are getting these things promotionally, and a lot of the times they're trying to spin stuff far too positively in order to sell them. I'm not gonna bullshit you. I think the PSVR is a cool unit. I think, yeah, playing Resident Evil 7 in VR adds some things, but it also takes away some things that make it more annoying. 
I certainly don't think that anyone needs to go out there and drop several hundred dollars to get a PSVR in order to get the definitive experience of Resident Evil 7. The game is good enough on its own merits to be played on a standard TV and be an amazing game. Don't buy into the hype and the nonsense that a lot of other people are buying into. The PSVR right now, it's nice to have, but it's certainly not necessary and it's not perfected enough to be a killer app kind of a deal that you absolutely need in order to play Resident Evil 7. It's a great game overall no matter how you play it, so don't buy into the nonsense. And that is it for my overview of using Resident Evil along with the PlayStation VR. I sure hope that you enjoyed this video, everyone, and if you did, please consider giving it a like here on YouTube, as well as subscribing to KO Gaming if you haven't yet, for all kinds of videos like these coming in the future. Also, please check out the video's description for a link to both my raw playthrough of Resident Evil 7 with just a standard TV, as well as some of the footage from when I used the PlayStation VR, so you can make your own head-to-head -head comparison yourself, as well as some awesome links like my Patreon as well as a discount and referral link for Loot Crate and many other things. Thanks a lot for watching and as always I'll see you next time right here on KO Gaming.